this used to be my old video camera and as you can tell it's a uh, traveler HD 10 X uh, camera and I, if I remember correctly I bought this camera in 2006 so let's say about 11 years ago um, could be later but I think it's 2006 anyhow um, this was a, a wonderful little camera uh, I mean I uh, I made most of my video well actually all my videos um, you saw on my channel with this camera this one here and um, this particular camera although the brand says traveler um, it's actually a camera uh, made uh, or, or rather sold by Medion which is a uh, German uh, brand of uh, electronics yeah which is sold by the way uh, quite often in the Aldi anyway um, the camera was just fine was a 5 megapixel camera uh, with a USB connector a card slot for memory expansion uh, uh, a sound output and a video output a composite video output and uh, it had a, a zoom knob on top and a record and stop button here a power button and then menu buttons right here and um, <clears throat> although the camera has an, uh, an autofocus um, uh, I think there is a manual focus in it as well but I never used it uh, I always used autofocus anyway um, oh yeah and it has a mechanical zoom which means that the, the, the lens you see in front of the CCD so the the, 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 the camera element in the camera yeah uh, can uh, focus correctly or zoom correctly uh, but with a large lens uh, a mechanical zoom is really perfect yeah uh, because you capture a lot of light and you can still zoom in uh, quite a lot into any sort of subject you're filming so um, this was really a great camera until I unfortunately broke it I I dropped it on the ground uh, this summer and um, well it broke uh, it it can still record sound but the uh, internal screen is dead and uh, I'm not sure so whether the CCD is broken or the internal screen is broken uh, but in any case well it's it's um, unmanageable uh, to use it like it is it was a 5 megapixel camera by the way uh, so uh, it filmed at 1280 times 720 30 frames per second really nice very nice camera it wasn't that cheap back in the day but it was a really good camera so uh, actually now I'm using a medium product again uh, but this time I'm using a smartphone from Medion um, to make videos and uh, this particular model is a P5006 smartphone um, it has an 8 megapixel camera with digital zoom which I'm not too fond of uh, because digital zoom is actually sort of a, a, a pixel multiplication and it makes for a very crude picture yeah uh, especially if you zoom in really stro uh, strongly uh, the picture quality rapidly drops um, it does make 30 frames per second videos um, and uh, in HD um, so 
it's it's quite nice it's it's really quite nice uh hd by the way uh if i'm not mistaken is uh, uh 1280 on 720 standard but you can get hd on 1920 times 1080 pixels as well um but what's most important is the the fact that it's HD so high definition and uh, 30 frames per second which makes for very stable very sharp videos okay so anyway that's about a resume of this old little camera which we will give a, a decent burial um, somewhere in my uh, a stock room and then we'll see what we'll do with it so uh, let me show you what the specifications are you need to look at when you look for a decent video camera okay so uh, I listed a few things that you need to uh, to look out for when you when you buy yourself a, a new camera okay so uh, here we go um, in descending order of importance I listed all these things uh, which are truly important if you look for a video camera to uh, shoot some some videos for YouTube okay so um, some of the specifications I uh, wrote down uh, would perhaps not be the specifications you would look for uh, but um, I wrote down those that are important to me um, and uh, well uh, obviously the first thing is that it should be a camera which can film in high definition or at a or possibly full high definition <coughs> The frame rate should be, in my case, at least 30 frames per second. Although you can still buy cameras that go uh, from 15 to 60 frames per second, uh, depending on the amount of memory your camera has and all that, because obviously the more frames your camera has to shoot per second, the more memory you'll need. Yeah, but. 30 frames per second uh, at least for me gives very fluid uh, very nice videos so um, I prefer 30 frames per second uh, which is also quite efficient in memory use um, you should also have a camera with auto or manual focus um, by uh, focus I mean uh, making the picture sharp okay sometimes you see that as a uh, blurred picture somebody is shooting and then suddenly the the image becomes really crisp and sharp that's the autofocus on that person's camera focusing in so sharpening the the image now autofocus uh, is is nice since it's automatic um, but there are some cases where a manual focus um, can be nice as well nice to have I mean uh, because then it allows you to make uh, really artistic shots you know uh, the French would call it flu artistique um, it obviously needs a good microphone so it's the fourth point here um, why well because when you make a video generally speaking you want people to hear clearly what you're saying or what you're demonstrating and uh, since uh, I'm in restoration of old radios and TVs uh, although it's not hi-fi quality sound is important to me so um, yeah you, sh you should have at least mono obviously 
but if you if you can get stereo sound recording <coughs> excuse me uh, that's uh, well for obvious reasons that's better <coughs> also in my case what's very important is the fifth point here it's the macro function with a macro function uh, let me see you could compare macro function with an extreme zoom function meaning that if you make a, a really really close up shoot of something um, you can place the camera at only a few inches or a few centimeters from the object you're trying to film and the image still stays focused so sharp and that's what a macro function is it allows you to film objects from really really close and still have a sharp image so for me at least a macro function is very important obviously the buttons on the camera so the record and zoom buttons and eventually the on off buttons um, should be easily accessible on your video camera I mean if you look at my old video camera okay the zoom you 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 kept it in I kept it in my hand like this okay so and I only had to push with my thumb on the record button right here to either start or stop recording and I had the button on top uh, I don't know if you can see it but it's this button here yeah and this button uh, allows for zooming so with a little bit of handiness and dexterity you could use your middle finger to uh, use the zoom button which allowed you to zoom in or out so in any case having all the buttons within reach of your thumb or you, one of your other fingers um, is really important and actually the same thing goes for the screen of, of the, the camera okay so I'm filming right now with a, a smartphone obviously a smartphone uh, smartphones screen is fixed you can't change the angle of the screen in any sort of way and that was something I had on my video camera which was really handy I could be filming uh, an object from the side like this and by pivoting my screen like this I could still have a clear image of what I was filming so that's really really handy uh, you can even you could even orient it like this yeah so making it point upward so that I could place my camera really low almost on the ground so to speak and still see in the screen what I was filming so this is a really handy feature to have if you don't have it well it's not a big deal but it still makes your life a lot easier okay that's all about accessibility uh, what you also need is a camera which outputs what it films in a useful format so in my case that would be an mp4 since it's for YouTube but you have cameras which make uh, WAV, uh, WAV movies and on, on Android smartphones um, they often make 3GP type of files, movie files. So, you know, you could say, well, there's a, a, maybe a quality difference between all those files, but I don't think quality is really a problem it's conversion so the the fact that you you filming you are filming in a certain uh, file type um, makes for an added problem that 
once you need to transfer it from your camera to your PC and edit it it needs to be in a format your editor can work with and generally speaking for example a 3GP format is not readily usable in a video editor not always more and more so but not always so obviously if you have a camera which can film directly in mp4 format that is a bit better okay so then the camera should have enough memory obviously uh, my smartphone has uh, 8 gigabyte memory which allows me to make quite a long video um, but uh, obviously it would be nice if you could expand your video camera with extra memory more memory the the more memory you have the longer your videos can be although i do try to make very short videos which i uh, after i've shot the videos i try to edit them together to knit them together so Let's say 8 gig is a, is a 8 gigabyte is a is a good average. Right, and then from then on, everything you see here is, uh, let's say, is nice to have, but it's not really essential since let's say most video cameras have these uh, functions like a zoom function and uh, a reasonably high megapixel resolution so 5 mega megapixel or higher uh, a built-in light source you know some cameras like this one this one uh, had a couple of LEDs at the bottom here that I could switch on and use as an extra light source which was handy when I was uh, filming something from really really close up so that can be useful um, a USB connector well it's low on my list of prerequisites why because nowadays uh, I can't imagine any camera not having a USB connector a Wi-Fi connector you know if you have a camera which allows you to connect it to your PC via Wi-Fi that's nice it's nice to have but it's really not extremely important since you can always connect your camera via USB cable to your PC obviously rechargeable batteries are a must but there again uh, nowadays almost every camera comes with rechargeable batteries although I do recommend a camera with standard type rechargeable batteries you know like an AA size you know pen light uh, battery which is about uh, one and a half inch long and, and half an inch thick uh, or something like that you know uh, also do try to buy a camera which is rechargeable via USB and not a, a sort of proprietary charger because um, <clears throat> you know just uh, for the sake of, of, of finishing that madness of having a, a USB uh, a, a charger for every possible application you have if you have one USB charger in the house that's more than enough um, there are two things that I want to end with um, do not be tempted to buy an emulated uh, megapixel camera okay so you'll see sometimes cameras that are advertised as extremely high resolution you know and then you'll see something written like 24 megapixel or even higher but that's actually a sham okay it's not 24 megapixel it's actually an 8 megapixel camera which is being digitally uh, augmented to 24 but it really gives a very grainy very unstable image uh, it's 
not good so don't be tempted to buy an emulated higher resolution okay um, if you're if you go look for resolutions of video cameras and all that you'll often see it written uh, in a in a format like this okay so 1920 times 1080 at 60 FPS um, it, it looks like Chinese but it's really easy to understand it means the camera can film uh, a 1920 by 1080 pixels images at 60 frames per second that's what it is um, if you see something like this yeah then this is most probably full high definition yeah, or high definition so extremely high definition okay not 4k but uh, certainly full HD if you see something like this so 1280 times 720 at 30 frames per second that is more like regular high definition you know like an LCD TV obviously nowadays most images are 19 by 6 and that's exactly the format I'm filming in right now okay let's move on to something else which is important well as you all know uh, YouTube decided to um, end the online video editor on the YouTube website and um, I had to look for a well for video editing software to use on my own laptop and I looked at all sorts of stuff and in the end I'm down to two programs which I'm showing to you right now I installed them on my laptop and I'm trying to decide which which one to use so the first one I had installed on my laptop was um, the Windows Movie Maker now Windows Movie Maker was a product which was uh, launched in 2012 if I'm not mistaken uh, or at least it was produced until 2012 and it was installed on my laptop which is a, uh, a, a Dell Windows 7 64-bit laptop yeah and uh, the movie maker is uh, okay uh, as far as I can tell right now it has more or less all the functions the YouTube video editor had uh, unfortunately for us uh, for one reason or another uh, Microsoft decided not to produce Movie Maker any longer although I understand you can still download Movie Maker uh, even from Microsoft's own website so um, I'm trying out the movie maker because I have it um, I'm not sure I'm going to use it but it, it, it looks like a, a fine tool if you're not going to edit any complicated movies or anything like that if you can get it uh, and I, I think it still runs on Windows 10 um, well then I would perhaps say well try it out it's not bad and uh, it's for free right moving on the other one I installed and that one I installed recently is um, HitFilm Express and now HitFilm Express is really really complete okay so it's it's not so easy to use it's almost you could say professional stuff it's also for free in the sense that you can download and install it for free 
uh, on your laptop and you don't need to pay for any of it uh, so you you get a what they call a basic video editor uh, with a, a few transitions built in and all that and you can cut and glue videos uh, to each other and 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 etc etc you can crop and and whatever so it really has quite a few possibilities uh, the the one thing that really really annoyed me is that um, they sort of force you to uh, post a commercial message onto your Facebook or your Google Plus or whatever before you can download the program so that's not so nice but you know you're getting a, a rather complete program uh, which you can use right away uh, for free so I think I can live with that one inconvenient the other inconvenience is that when HitFilm uh, Express starts up it shows a, a splash screen uh, filled with all the products they sell in a sort of a, a proprietary online shopping page you could say uh, that too is a bit annoying but hey you know you get it for free so you can't really complain now there was a third program that I was going to have a look at actually I was almost on the verge of buying it until I started to have problems even downloading the software um, I'm not sure if I should mention it but uh, I'm still going to do it uh, I bought or I thought I had bought Sony Vegas uh, video editor um, until I started to have trouble even downloading the installation package so whether the problem is at Magix itself so the company that produces Sony Vegas or at the company where I bought the license to the program I don't know the fact remains that I never even succeeded in downloading the program so I asked my money back so I asked for a refund which I did get and um, I out of pure misery I downloaded HitFilm Express and uh, tried that out and uh, what I see until now looks really good but like I said uh, be prepared for a steep learning curve I mean HitFilm Express is a lot more complicated the movie maker anyway so um, like I said I'm still deciding between HitFilm Express and movie maker uh, but I think uh, most uh, of you will probably guess which one it will be in the end all right I want to finish by showing you all of this okay so all these cabinets you see here all of them are labeled and I bought myself something like oh let me see uh, that's six eight ten twelve well roughly 14 cabinets worth of drawers so which would make uh, I still have quite a few of those those small ones left in a box somewhere um, but I think in total I have about mm, a small 600 of, of uh, worth of, of drawers of tiny drawers like this yeah filled with parts and like I said I started the, the monumental task 
of trying to catalog all the parts I have so all the resistors capacitors transistors you name it and then to order them and put them away in a small drawer in one of those cabinets um, when I say I have 600 drawers I mean of course 600 small drawers like these and uh, as it turns out I my estimate was rather close to the mark so I had just enough drawers to stash away everything I still need to stash a few more things in one of those small drawers or medium drawers like these for example okay uh, but uh, I'm getting there now most of the time goes into uh, ordering and, and looking for all the parts that need to be stored away and then um, <coughs> writing a small label sticking it onto the drawer putting in the parts and then moving on um, not a few times I have had to rearrange all these small drawers um, because for example I found a, a certain resistor type uh, or value and then a few minutes later um, uh, 10 values on I found a value which actually needed to be put between the first and the second value so that forced me to rearrange all the other following drawers so one of the tips I can give you is before you start putting away everything in little drawers like I did um, try to lay it out on a large table for example if you're working with resistors group all your resistors by value in small little piles which you will then uh, be able to store away in a small drawer that way you will save yourself quite a bit of time um, anyway so as you can tell I have quite a few of these uh, cabinets and there are still a few more of those small ones to be added and then I have a, a large cabinet which is this one it has uh, 10 drawers okay uh, and they are transparent as well and in these drawers I will lay all my tools uh, you know like soldering iron uh, multimeter like this one here for example let me show you uh, hang on come on yeah so you can put away your multimeter in a drawer like this and and you in fact you can put away several measurement instruments in in one such drawer and then uh, have it uh, stashed away neatly and since the the drawer is transparent uh, you don't always need to open up the drawer to see what's inside of it okay so um of this tower type I'm going to buy at least one or two more uh, they are not too expensive uh, around I would say 35 pounds maybe 40 pounds for a 10 drawer model um, these ones are the large ones are 40 drawers and they cost oh I'd say uh, 11 or 12 pounds a piece and the small ones uh, cost something like 8 pounds a piece anyway um, you could say yeah but why do all this expense in and, and all this effort trying to put it away in small drawers like these you know uh, why why making that effort and spending that much money well you know in 
the long run, um, having all those parts catalogued and put away in small drawers uh, will allow me to keep better track of, of the parts I do have and those that I don't have and therefore I need to buy. Um, it also allows me to find quicklier a part I'm looking for and since those cabinets can also be hung up to a wall if I really wanted to you know because it has attachments which allow you you know cutouts which allow you to to hang it up uh, on a wall um, I can I can put them away neatly uh, along a wall if I really wanted to uh, I'm not sure quite yet how I'm going to store the cabinets but possibly I might just hang them up on a wall uh, in any case it saves me money in the long run it saves me time in the long run and it's just neater it's cleaner yeah because up to now I had been storing all my parts in tiny little plastic bags like these you know and I have hundreds and hundreds of these little bags you know like this one was a 100 pico no 1000 pico farad one kilovolt uh, capacitor inside this little bag you know and I have like I say I have hundreds of these little baggies and I was really getting tired of this so yeah uh, it's a monumental task uh, you you can bet you'll need at least at least one week one full week to to do it all uh, and and you'll still keep on finding parts when you think you're done okay so it will still take quite a bit of time to uh, get to the point where I am so if I judge correctly I still have one or two days of cataloging to do and then I'm done uh, and once my uh, my little lab is ready and cleaned up I'll show you I'll, I'll make a, a small video and show you uh, how it looks once I'm done so um, that's it for now I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you all back soon uh, to watch the videos I cut with my new camera and my new editing software and uh, well I sincerely hope you will enjoy them as much as you enjoyed my older videos thanks a lot and see you soon